Hi! This is something new and different. Um, I don't usually talk to the camera when I do these little video things. This is a bit of a how-to, a little DIY. Um, how to make your cheap 50 40 30 20 dollar ukulele play a little bit better. This is a Mahalo um, UK 51 uh, I bought it for about 50 bucks. I think tax is in. And for what I played for it, it's a fun little instrument that I've had for... I've had it for... I've had it for at least four years, I think. I'm not a huge ukulele guy. I'm more of a guitarist. I've been playing the guitar for a bit close to ten years. So that's why I ended up buying a cheap ukulele. I didn't want to get something that was going to be a huge investment. Just wanted to try it out and see if I could have fun with it. I ended up liking it. But I found that the instrument that I bought was a bit on the uh, unplayable side. I could handle it. But the action of the strings was so high, they were so far off of the fretboard, um, that playing any chord or any note even past like the fifth fret there uh, you'd start going out of tune the amount of force it took me to push down those strings was causing you know the notes to be gradually higher and higher and higher and you go up to around the 12th fret up there and I'd be at least a semitone out of tune which rendered the thing almost unplayable except for your very basic chords down here and a little bit of fiddling around um, so what I ended up doing, which uh, you may or may not want to do, because it's a bit of a risk, unless you're extremely careful, and even then, things can go wrong. Um, but I ended up lowering the action at the nut and at the bridge. I used a pocket knife and a lot of patience and care. I was very careful and took my time with this. I wouldn't suggest doing this in just running through it in 10 minutes. You're probably going to mess up your instrument. But if you have a good sharp pocket knife, if you're good with using it, or if you have maybe uh, some sandpaper wrapped around a business card, or a RAS, or something along those lines, you should be able to do this without too much difficulty. You should end up with a much more playable instrument without having to spend all the extra money. So where I would start is up here at the nut. Um, no matter how low, your action is at the bridge. If your nut is too high, your strings are too high down here, it's going to be hard to play even the most basic chords because you're going to have to put a lot of pressure on them. So what I did, and I used my trusty, dusty, handy little Swiss Army knife. I took the smallest blade and I just took the string out of the notch there, would put the blade in and just slowly, slowly, very carefully carve down the groove for each of those strings. What I would do is remove just a little bit, just a couple of flakes of material. Then I would refit the string, tighten it up, tune it, and then to make sure that I wasn't going too low, play every single fret all the way up the neck. That way you make sure you're not getting to the point where you're having buzz, um, you're not rendering it unplayable. What you want to do is do that for each of the strings, keeping in mind you're going to have to compensate for the larger strings. I did that for each of them and went to the point where it was very comfortable for me to fret on the first fret on each of those strings. At a point where fretting up here felt roughly the same as fretting from one fret to the next. A little bit higher than that, but that's sort of the comparison I wanted to make. And so after doing that, and making sure that I wasn't going too low and causing any fret buzz, uh, I moved up to the bridge, or the saddle. Depending on your cheap ukulele, this will either be uh, much easier than this, or much harder. For me, it was harder. The saddle on the bridge here, on my ukulele, can't be easily removed. It's glued in there pretty solidly, which... I mean, along with all the other things on this $50 ukulele, it's built fairly well. It's a pretty solid instrument. 
Um, but for me, that was a, a bit of a, a complication because I didn't want to get this thing and smack it with a hammer or something and try and get it out because I didn't want to end up, you know, kind of ruining the integrity of the body of the instrument. And I didn't want to mess up the rest of the bridge there. So what I actually ended up doing was carving some saddles into the bridge. And I think you can see right there fairly well what I mean. This was originally one flat piece of plastic. Now I have carved a groove for each of the strings to sit in. And the process for doing that was essentially the same as the nut up here. Um, if you're able to remove the saddle from your bridge right there, um, then I'd highly recommend you just take it out and then shave off from the bottom and then re-glue it and reset it. You won't have to worry about getting your string spacing right and it'll be a lot easier, uh, to be honest. Another thing that I've heard people do uh, with the bridges that sometimes fixes the intonation on these uh, cheap ukuleles is that they'll take the saddle, biscuit, bridge, whatever, out, turn it around, and put it in. And depending on the angle at the top of the, um, the saddles there, uh, sometimes that can improve the intonation. For me, I don't think it would have made a difference because this has got compensated uh, saddles on it. Now, there is the question of, you know, because I'm carving these out, I'm taking away the compensation that was on the bridge there. Because uh, some of these are angled back or forward, uh, depending on the string. It's possible that I did lose some intonation by doing that, and that's a possible consequence of, of carving out the, the bridge in that way. But, the string action being lowered by as much as it did, which at least two to three millimeters for each string. So I feel like the incantation, intonation, my goodness, that I gained by bringing the strings down, getting them closer to the, the neck, making it so much more playable, nicer sounding. I feel like that makes up for any intonation you lose by, by um, carving away down here. So in the end, if you're careful, you take your time, you follow my instructions kind of closely and I'm sure um, you can find other examples of people doing this kind of stuff online. Uh, you can end up with an instrument that's going to cost you spare money, is going to be very comfortable and playable once you get it done. This thing plays like, like butter. And the intonation is still not perfect, but it's a whole lot better than it was before. The C string is the hardest one, and I might be able to compensate for that by maybe angling the groove back there a little more. I, I can still bring the action down a bit further, but like I said, it's greatly improved from the way it was. If you bought yourself one of these super cheap ukuleles, but it's causing you a little bit of pain, causing you some hassle, uh, you might want to give it a shot. What's to lose? except your ukulele, or a finger, or something. Be careful. Don't play with knives. They're not toys. All right, that's it. Hope this was a little bit helpful. I'm gonna go now, because I don't like talking to a, well, myself. Okay, bye.